maybe like 2005 I've been working on that song. So uh, I never, I just never felt right. I worked on it with the White Stripes, with the Raconteurs. I recorded it with the Dead Weather, recorded it with Jay-Z, and recorded it with my last, my first solo album, and then recorded it again. I just, I don't know why I kept doing it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> So when I first heard this song about two months ago, it caught my attention and I really liked it. Lyrically I thought that it was quite clever, so I decided that I would make a video about it. I wrote down the lyrics as I heard them and then I compared that to the lyrics on a few websites. And then from that I got a notebook and a pen and I started to scribble down what I thought the song meant. I wrote down the lyrical ideas and, well, what I thought the lyrical ideas were and what I thought the symbology of the song was. And then I just got stuck. And uh, I couldn't figure out, or I didn't feel like I could figure the song out enough to justify making a video about it. So I instead turned my attention to another topic that I wanted to explore, which was books. And I made a video about that. But now I'm back to the song and I was listening to Jack White's new album, Boarding House Reach Again, and I felt that same itch that I had initially, and an itch to, to make a video about the song. So I decided that I would do that now. And uh, even if I don't completely understand the song, this is my attempt to make some sense of it and to see what Jack White is really getting at with the song, what the song is sort of exploring lyrically. So, here we go. So, as far as I can tell, this song and every aspect of the song serves to establish one main idea. The music video emphasizes this idea, the process of getting the song recorded emphasizes this idea, and the name of the song itself just pretty much wraps up the idea quite neatly over and over and over again. This main overarching idea is the repetitious nature of reality. How different things, events, and people come and go over and over and over again. In the music video, the camera follows the same visual pattern over and over again, each time returning to the same beginning. With the changes happening over and over, we begin to see that everything is constantly changing, and yet somehow there's always one constant, the camera. Specifically, the camera's movement. The camera is like the observer, so this constant pattern of movement that the camera adheres to serves as a singular constant amidst the continually changing realities that it gets to perceive. Even the production of the song was repetitious, something that had to happen over and over and over again until Jack was finally happy with the song. The opening lyrics of the song, as well as a common lyrical theme throughout, revolves around the Greek myth of Sisyphus. Sisyphus, a cunning and tricksterish king, was condemned by the gods to an eternity of rolling a large boulder up a hill, only to watch it roll back down again once it neared the top. And that was to be Sisyphus's punishment, to roll the boulder up the hill over and over and over again, forever. The word Sisyphean means something that is never ending and futile and usually it's used in reference to a task. So many lyrics in the song emphasize this Sisyphean theme and this theme fits perfectly to describe something that's happening over and over again. I think that the Sisyphean dreamer that is being sung about is us people. Sisyphus represents us in the struggles of life and how we're each confronted with the difficulties of life and have to keep pushing only to eventually die anyway. In this way, we hold the weight of the world on our shoulders. I think therefore I die is one of my favorite lyrics in any song ever. I can only think it's a deliberate play on Descartes' famous, I think therefore I am. Only in this case, we see the lyrics expressing the idea that we only die because we can think. If there was no one to experience or to think, there would be no one to perceive life and ergo no one to perceive death either. Because I can think, I can die. Like the warning at the beginning of this video said, I am exploring my own subjective interpretations, so please take everything I say with a grain of salt. Having said that...
So the wind is blowing, volcanoes are blowing, my lungs are blowing over and over. What does this mean? Why put these lyrics in? Well, again, it serves the overall idea of things repeating. I like how these lyrics don't imply a separation between man and nature. The wind, volcanoes, and a person's lungs are all grouped together. They're all part of one process which repeats itself. And just like the wind blows without our conscious control, so too do our lungs breathe and our hearts pump. Oh, I love this line so much. Who could not win the mistress, wooed the maid. This is taken out of an essay written by the 18th century English poet Alexander Pope. It comes from a poem titled An Essay on Criticism. The line, who could not win the mistress, wooed the maid, refers to critics who, unable or unwilling to create themselves, would rather criticize the works of someone else. In this way, they aren't able to quote unquote, win the mistress and instead settle for the maid, which in this context represents something easier to obtain, but also less desirable. Jack White then follows this line with, with no sign of the grave. I think that what he's saying here is that there will always be creators and there will always be critics that criticize the creations. This is something that's here to stay and something that we all have to contend with over and over and over again. When I first heard the song and first heard these lyrics, I just couldn't figure out what they meant or how they, you know, how they fit into the song, which is why I put making this video on the back burner. After spending a lot of time contemplating these lyrics though, I've reached a conclusion. I still have no idea what Jack White is trying to express here, but I do have some thoughts that I'll detail. So just quickly going through them, hollow body most likely refers to a hollow body guitar, wine belly perfidy, I think he's referring to someone who's drank a lot of alcohol and this has led them to a state of perfidy, you know, being disloyal or hard to trust. Uh, in the third line, Jack mentions I saw a Francini, which is an Italian motor brand company which went bankrupt in 1999 but started over again with a new company in the year 2000. To be honest with you guys, I cannot tell the significance of the lyric hollow body. There's a very good chance that the meaning is simple and I'm just not getting it. So if you figured it out, please let me know what you think in the comments. For wine belly perfidy, it could just be to reference the tendency for people to give into their vices and therefore suffer the consequences of our bad decisions over and over again. Although based on those lyrics, I do think this idea is quite a stretch and I'm obviously just speculating. The next lyric, move like Isotta Frascini, I can see a very specific idea of having to start over since the company did go bankrupt and began under a new name. I think this really does capture the main idea of things having to begin again after a lot of initial work involved in pushing the boulder up the mountain, metaphorically speaking. These next lyrics are pretty simple. I think this quite directly addresses the repetitive nature of our lives, how life is essentially a journey from nothing back to nothing, and how as we get older, we become fragile and eventually end up in a metaphorical and sometimes literal stroller again. And then in keeping with the mythological flavors of the lyrics so far, we get these lines, which I think refer directly to Sisyphus and how much like us, he's suffering the consequences of his poor decisions, which is something that people will continue to do over and over and over again. So later in the song, we get to the bridge, which is quite different from the rest of the song lyrically. Nothing pushes us like our passions, and we love to talk about it whenever we get the chance to. In fact, we can't get enough of talking about our passions and things that we're really interested in. And then we move into these almost mythological lyrics. If we're keeping with the Greek myths, then these lovers Jack is singing about could be Hero and Leander. Leander was in love with Hero. She was a priestess of Aphrodite's. Every night Leander would swim across the Hellespont waterway and Hero would leave a lamp burning in her window of her tower so that Leander could use it as a guide so that he could find his way. Leander argues with Hero and tells her that she's a 
priestess of Aphrodite. And because Aphrodite was the goddess of love, Aphrodite would hate being worshipped by a virgin. And therefore, <laughs> they should sleep together. And then they do! They keep this fling going on for, for a, a whole summer, but then one night there's like a terrible storm and the wind blows out Hera's light and Leander can't find his way in the waters. And because of that, he loses his way and he drowns. And when Hero sees his dead body wash up on shore, she throws herself out of her tower into the ocean where she drowns too. Now, even if you haven't heard of Hero and Leander, you still know that story. The story of two lovers who are separate individuals, who fall in love and then develop a unity. And things start to go well. But then the tragedy of life strikes and one of them dies. But then the other one, not content to be separate from the unity that existed, kills herself. Because for the lovers in the story, this is a problem you can only end by ending the one who's experiencing the problem. For our characters, the tragedy of something like this is too much to bear and they can't just ignore it. They either have to face the tragedy or eliminate themselves along with it. But this is a common story and one you're no doubt familiar with in some way. Now, even though the Greek myth might be related to these lyrics, I don't actually think Jack is singing about Hero and Leander. I don't think he's singing about two people who are in love with each other. Are you ready for my super speculation of these lines? I don't think Jack is singing about two lovers here. I think he's singing about lovers as in passionate people, lovers of life. People are always told and are always being told how to behave. And because of this, sometimes they don't pursue what they really want to. And as a result, never find their passion because they're blinded by their ego. Or in other words, blinded by the idea that they have of themselves. And this is something that is always happening to people over and over again. We sacrifice who we are so that we can stay true to who we think we are. Our passions are drowning because they're blinded by our egos. Like I said, super speculation. <laughs> Another cool aspect of the song is that the main riff that you hear at the very beginning of the song repeats itself over and over throughout the song with some slight variations. So the idea of repetition is expressed lyrically and at the same time expressed through the melody and sounds of the song itself. Very cool. Some final thoughts. I like the song. I think it's a cool song. I didn't like it initially. It took a few listens before I started to really enjoy it. A lot of people don't like the backing vocals. I can understand that. I didn't really like them initially either, but as I listened to it, I kind of they kind of grew on me. Um, the way that the the voices sing over and over and the way that it becomes more distorted as the song goes on, I think that's pretty cool. Even though I don't have the song completely figured out yet, I it was a lot of fun to explore some of the possible narratives and hopefully I might have sparked some thoughts in you. If you have a different take on the song, which I think everybody does, uh, I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comments. And uh, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel and you want to support the channel, please consider getting intimate with my subscribe button. And uh, yeah, fellow human being on the opposite end of the screen. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.